Yo, Adam. Yo, what's up? Is this swinging? I mean, I think kind of, but let's ask NPR's Steve Inskeep, Rachel Martin, and Noel King. Ooh. I'm Adam Manis. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm Peter Martin, <laughs> and I'm swinging. <laughs> uh, you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Oh, music advice coming at you. You got it, buddy. You got it. You know what's funny about that intro, Peter? I know you were trying kind of not to swing. Oh, I wasn't just trying. I was achieving. No, I mean, but the thing is, is for most people's standards, it was kind of swinging. Well, well, then they need to tune into the rest of this episode. I know, I know. Because we're about to put, put to the test some science put out there by NPR because that was not swinging not not from a spiritual emotional rhythmic or scientific standpoint definitely not from a facial level you had it on your face like a <laughs> poker face this is not swinging but it, but it is uh, and this is not this is not a flex it's going to sound like it but it oh, is hard for me to not swing because it doesn't <laughs> feel good it doesn't sound good yeah. and it's weird right this is not part of your personality your whole personality is like well no i'm yeah, not no it's true man no, i mean but i think yeah m- hopefully my musical per- i mean that's the whole point of us studying this music, learning from the masters, um, but also just being part of the culture of jazz music, I think, is, and this is not to say that like jazz is swing and it's supposed to be from this period, but that is one of the important and interesting grooves that I think that we infuse our music with and connect with the music, yeah. you know, as that kind of layer, that rhythmic layer, and it's just a fun part of the music. So, we're, so to not do it is not fun. As it's it not fun. <laughs> so we're yeah, we're referencing this really great story that NPR put out a few weeks ago about the science of swing, like what makes things swing. And it's a question we get all the time here at Open Studios. We're trying to teach swing, right? And our stock answer is like. You know, really, swing is kind of a vibe. Like, right, it's right. hard to define. You can't really notate it out correctly. Uh, as Christian McBride um, so beautifully puts it in the article, computers can't really nail it because it's such a human thing. Like, it is, it's almost like it's an attitude, it's a vibe, it's a reaction to what's happening around you and inside you. Yeah. And it's really hard to put into words and traditional language what is going on. Right. Right. But I do think there's an interesting layer of science that we can apply to, you know, an artistic endeavor to sort of explain it, almost like a, like the way music theory would go back and kind of explain something that is very human and natural and doesn't need a scientific explanation. But sometimes it's sort of fun to do that if it's sort of valid. And I think that this, well, first of all, the the uh, the article we're talking about, the the story that appeared on NPR is called What Makes That Song Swing? At Last, Physicists Unravel a Jazz Mystery. And that sort of sounds like, oh yeah, so physics is going to explain it. But yeah. it is kind of interesting the way this goes down. So we thought, because this, is, this has been talked about, and this is from the final Finding Time uh, Science Desk, actually, at NPR. This not the not, music desk or anything. Not the music desk yeah. or the uh, Jazz Night in America or anything. This is really kind of coming from, a, I think, a very interesting... And, of course, it appeared on Morning Edition. We all love Morning Edition. We love Morning Edition. You know what, though? Like, I wonder, just a caveat on this. Don't... I would, I would just caution anybody who's about to listen to this or, or definitely go check out the original story, too. And we'll have a link to this. You know, you can hear the audio and everything. But if you're looking for advice on how to swing... Yeah. You're probably not going to be able to physics your way into being able to swing. No, yeah. no. But that's what we talk about. It's interesting to go back and explain that. And so we thought we would just sort of play some of the article and sort of, I mean, um, play some of the story and kind of react. And it starts out with this great Louis Armstrong track that I'm ashamed to say I'd never heard before. Shame. Because <laughs> I'm kind of a Louis Ding. Armstrong uh, aficionado and Shame. fan. But that's the fun thing to, to hear some. So here, let's check it out. Now, a mystery about music. Uh, that's, that's swing, yeah, for sure. <laughs> about jazz. What is this thing called swing? What oh. is this thing called swing? It's whatever you're in doing. In 1939. But that, what's interesting about that, obviously those horns are... I mean, like that... I mean, it's so swinging yeah. and so relevant still and not dated or corny sounding, I don't think. Not at all. Um, but what Louis Armstrong's doing... Are we going to overanalyze the first 15 seconds of this? I think we that might. That would be very nice <laughs> to do, yeah. It's some of the best parts, but check out... What is this thing called swing? Like, he's not- very much floating above it. He's swinging, but it's not like, you know, so like there's already that push and pull, and they're going to talk about this later if we get that far into the story. 
about that and how prescient that is to kind of what we actually feel as swing. Yeah. And if you're, by the way, if you're, a, if you call yourself a jazz musician and you haven't. Ooh, dogmatic. I love it. <laughs> and you haven't gone back and checked out at least the, the like the rudimentary Louis Armstrong stuff. Yeah. You know, the Hot Fives and Hot Sevens stuff. West End Blues, Potato West End Blues. Blues. All that stuff. Like, go check it out. the Blues. Because that is the foundation of swing. Like, it is yeah. the foundation of the language still played today. And the, right. uh, the article references people like Nicholas Payton and Branford Marsalis, along with Louis Armstrong. But what Branford plays is a result of what Louis played. It comes from right. that foundation of what Louis Armstrong, you know, gave to the world. It's an right. amazing thing. Absolutely. Okay, we're continuing. Louis Armstrong asked a question that musicians still debate. What creates the swing feel in jazz? Now, physicists think they've got an answer, and it all has to do with the subtle nuances in timing. Okay, so this is really interesting, because at first, this is the kind of thing I think for us as musicians, as jazz lovers, um, uh, uh, fans of the jazz culture, we would bristle at, perhaps, to be like, well, what is swing? And we've always talked about different ways to practice it, to learn it, yeah. to um, you know, incorporate it over different times stuff. All of a sudden, it's like, well, now... Physicists, <laughs> yeah. Hackles might come up, for sure, with yeah. that, yeah. But... Continue on with us, please. Okay. <laughs> Part of our science series, Finding Time, NPR's Maria Godoy has a story. Don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Okay, big shout out to NPR and Maria yeah. and, and is that, Mar I'm sorry, who's doing this story? I should, yeah, Maria Godoy, because we've, we're, we're not even 30 seconds into the, the thing. We've already got some of the swing and stuff, Ella Fitzgerald. You know, Louis Armstrong, and not just any elephant. I mean, like, this is very thoughtfully put together. Yeah, 100%. And they're saying science is explaining it, but they're very much presenting the sound of it, you yeah, know, so yeah. like right in line with it. I love that. Do I, 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 do I? Oh. As Ella Fitzgerald and many others have sung, swing has long been considered an essential component of jazz. It's hard to put into words. That's a little controversial, though, right? An essential component of jazz? I don't think so. No, it's not? Okay. No. So if you're not swinging, you're not playing jazz? Ooh. I think it's... Yeah, I think... Shots fired. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's for another day. It is. Okay. But you might describe swing as a rhythmic phenomenon. Propulsive, groovy feeling created when performers are playing off each other in a way that... Makes you just want to move the music. So I do love the definition of swing as a yeah. rhythmic phenomenon. Oh, it's so I great. I think that's a really fun, instead of like it's a specific rhythm or it's a vibe, right. but it is a rhythmic phenomenon in that it encapsulates not just one particular rhythm or one particular feel, but it's the in, this in, these t entire ecosystem of rhythms that yep. exist that create this feeling. I love that that definition. That's yeah, cool. and I love that she's already uh, touching on the interplay among musicians as 100%, being an element yeah. because that's missed with a lot of m music theorists and stuff. When like when you try to get technical, like they're coming in from a science standpoint, so it's a little bit more holistic in terms of like this is not about do you play a C minor seven before an F seven? Does that make it swing? Do you play a dotted? Triplet, you know what I mean? Like theoretically trying to describe it where you can pull the parts apart a little bit too much, but thinking about how it interplays with um, several musicians, mm -hmm. so important. Oh. Swing is a feel. There's a certain language. There's a certain inflection of rhythm. Christian McBride is a Grammy-winning jazz bassist, music educator, and host of NPR's Jazz Night in America. And open studio artist and friend of the podcast. Yeah, don't forget that part. <laughs> don't forget that part. Yeah, I love his, I mean, musical phenomena, um, rhythmic phenomena. Yeah, and language. It's a feel. It's a yeah, I mean, this yeah. is so many different great lenses to kind of understand this. He says one defining component of swing is how eighth notes are played. Instead of playing them straight. And that is like, In jazz, these notes are swung, meaning the downbeat or every other eighth note is played just a little longer, while the offbeat notes in between are shortened, creating a galloping rhythm like this. The jazz musicians know that technique alone can't explain swing. How do you like it so far? How do you like that explanation? I love that explanation. Now we're getting it's a little really, really scientific with the actual you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, subdivision of the beat. After all, even a computer can swing a note. Wow. A computer just ain't, it just ain't going to swing that hard. You know? <laughs> but it's just interesting what he said. He said a computer ain't going to swing that hard. So 
this kind of opening the door that you could, and we're going to hear some some kind of almost AI computer generated type swing in a way. It's still sort of swinging. So like, there's definitely different degrees. There's a gradient. There's a range of swinging. It's not an on and off switch. Still don't get the real proper swing feel, which is a human feel. You know what I mean? Okay, did you hear that chord there? <laughs> that, I think this is part of it too. Like that, uh, they're not playing it all exactly together. Oh no! I mean, that, I, I think. Wait, let's check it out. In feel, which is a human feel. You know what I mean? That's true. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds good though. Yeah, yeah. But it's right great. after he says a human feel. Yeah, right? it is human. Yeah, yeah. That's McBride swinging with one of his bands. For me, I think you gotta lock people in and say, okay, here's where the time is. Here's here's where the rhythm is. And then everybody collectively, the musicians and the listeners can go, ah, yeah, that feels that feels right, right? But so he's talking about two different things, like kind of elements to the actual sort of manifestation of the the rhythmic phenomena, right? Yeah. Like you gotta lock in. Yeah. And, the rhythm and, itself has to be like the grid has to be locked in. Right. Yeah. Right. You have to lock it in. And he says for the other musicians, now of course he's Christian McBride coming from the bass player's standpoint and, and coming from someone that knows how to lock in like almost immediately. Yeah. But he says for the listener for the other musicians and the listeners. Yeah. That's really interesting way to think about it. It's like it's a very inclusive thing, but it's also like we're locking in, but he is making kind of an antidote to like a computer locking something in where it's like that it doesn't have that human element so then it becomes one of these things it's like well what is different about it then why can't if it can be scientifically explained and it's like the eighth note is being altered by this amount how come a computer can't do that what what is the human element yeah, actually yeah. that's good exactly are musicians playing off each other to create that swing feel that's what theo geisel wanted to find out theo I'm a professor uh, for theoretical physics Geisel is Director Emeritus of the Max Planck Institute for Dynamics and Self-Organization in Göttingen, Germany. Okay, I love this. Swinging. <laughs> Swinging. I love that we're going to Göttingen, which I've been to, Germany. Have you really? To learn, oh, absolutely, um, to, to go to Germany. But, but full disclosure here, I have a little bit of a family connection here because he said, so my grandfather was a, was a physicist yeah. um, and was actually was German. Uh -huh. And they said the Max Planck Institute in, at this university. My grandfather he actually worked. was Max Planck. <laughs> he was not Max Planck, but he worked with Max Planck. Did he really? And, yeah, we have a picture oh, of them gosh. and stuff. So, But I don't know that they were defining swing at that point because that would be pre you know Louis Armstrong and all this the very early days but now the Germans have physicists perhaps which are always known as some great physicists man I thought you were accomplished <laughs> but it turns out <laughs> in your family's <laughs> life totally disconnected I mean this is very coincidental at this point you know. physics of synchronization for example how the billions of neurons in your brain coordinate with each other He's also a pastor. So I love that, but there, there's this, there, it's coming back to this element too about swing being a cooperative thing, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and what is the interaction? I with? think that's underrated in how we, and I mean, even us, how we talk yeah. about it to students, but it is a interactive experience between two beings. Like right. it is not just isolated. Of course you can swing playing solo piano or whatever. Right. But or it, solo bass or so, you know, right, of course. trumpet or. But it is an interaction even in that setting. Right. It and is. it's like how much... When we're playing solo piano, are we, you know, kind of duplicating or trying to simulate? It is an, an interaction, interaction between, between like, the hands mm, or the lines. Mm, mm, yeah, mm, mm, mm. I mean, we talk like about that it. tension. We in, talk about like take your snare drum solo and then play half of what you sing, right? So right. if you're like a do ga a do um da do go do you know what I mean? But there's yeah. interaction between what's bouncing around in my head and right. what I'm playing. Right, it's right, It's interesting. Right. Yeah, and when we talk about, like, you know, bass and drums, rhythm sections, yeah. great ones that, you know, we've either been around or that you hear on record, there's always that, like, and this is a very, like, subtle sort of music theorist 
I think viewpoint on this, but like there's a tension between but ding 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 ding. ding. It's not like when they talk about Christian McBride talks about locked in. There's not a precision of like on the grid. No, not point. at all. There's a tension between that ride symbol and yeah. oftentimes in the bay with the, I think with some of the great. Uh, rhythm sections, well, check bass out drum duos. Caleb, link to uh, Christian and Hutch's video with Open Studio about who's in charge of the tempo. All right, because they talk about even Ray Brown. You know, one of the uh, not even arguably one of the <laughs> swingingest bass players of all time. Right, was always a little bit of the head of the beat, and it was always tension with whatever drummer he would be playing with. Right, but that tension is what caused an incredible feel, right? right? This like tension of like where he's pushing, the drummer is maybe going to go with him, but probably going to kind of hold back a little yep. bit. Yep. And that's that that interplay is what works. Well, it's great you're bringing that up oh, because we we're going to be getting into a little good, bit. Good, good, good. Let's go back to Göttingen, Germany. He has a band with other physicists. They play at conferences. Over the years, <laughs> Geisel has wondered... Geisel. How do musicians synchronize when they try to create swing in general? So that's a great... Like, I love the way he puts that. How do musicians synchronize when they play swing? Yeah. You know, so it's not about, like, how do you swing? What is the grid that you're attaching yourself? How do you synchronize? Yeah. And if you think about, like, synchronized swimming or, like... I always think about, like, the, the relay thing when you're passing the baton along. It's not just about the quickest way to get there. You have to synchronize the running, the feel, the human element, right? Yeah. Now, you would think that musicians should synchronize as best they can when they play together. This is true, of course, to some extent. But since the 1980s, <laughs> some scientists and music scholars have claimed that the swing feel is actually created by minute timing deviations there we go. between there different we go. Ray Brown comes <laughs> through again. Theory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Geisel and his colleagues took jazz recordings and used a computer to manipulate the timing of the soloist with respect to the rhythm section. We had experts professional and, and semi-professional jazz musicians rate how swinging these uh, different uh, versions of a tune Yeah, were. I mean, but this has been proven again, again and again and again between Dexter Gordon and Harry, uh, Herbie Hancock and Brad Meldow, you mm. know, that it's not super lined up with whatever's happening in the right section. Yeah. But I love that, and this is where we can really think about how science and the arts do not have, the, the, are, are in fact very much aligned when they're when they're when they are synchronized in an intelligent and human way yeah. is that he took he didn't put this feed this into some algorithm for a comp, for an AI computer to decide if something was swinging. He said the scientific approach was they took a group of professional <laughs> jazz musicians to rate the swing as yeah. opposed to a computer or a grid rating it. So that's the human element yeah. because as we say, it's a feeling. It's it's a uh, fun, musical phenomenon. It's a rhythmic phenomenon. Even amongst and who's best able to be able to evaluate that. Yeah, us. but even <laughs> us. But even amongst like you can think about different kinds of swings. So you think about Dexter Gordon, you know, in the fifties and playing very behind. And maybe you think about Keith Jarrett. Now he sings. Now he sobs. Keith Jarrett, as much as it feels like Keith Jarrett, Chick Corea. Now he sings. Now he sobs. Chick Corea, as much as it feels like he might be ahead when he goes and does those big, big lines up and down the keyboard. Yeah. he's actually pulling back a little bit from. Right. Roy Haynes and Miroslav, like he's he's a little bit, yeah. just a little tension, yep. and they're kind of on the front. And he's edge. ahead before that. Sometimes and he's ahead one before phrase that. before that. Exactly. Yeah. So and you, but you consider that to be a different kind of swing than Dexter, and it is, but yep. it's still playing with that tension. That's good stuff right there. Well, this is great too because then it's like you're going to professional musicians that know what swing feels like. You're not just saying, does this swing? Well, does it sound like Louis Armstrong? It's like, no, does it have that same kind of spirit and feel? Yeah. Even if it's Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, Louis Armstrong, like, because we understand that connection. I think when we get outside of our heads and being like, no, this has to be like this, and this has to be like this. Yeah. In one version, for example, the piano soloist started at the exact same time as the rhythm section, like this. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at that expert right there. Wow, yeah. You like that? That sounds like not swinging. In another version? <laughs> so if it sounds like not swinging, is it not swinging? It is. <laughs> but isn't that crazy? That's like, but what does that sound like to you? Like, what does what that remind It sounds like AI jazz. It does. Yeah. It does. Yep. It sounds like YouTube non-licensed AI. Sounds like coffee house <laughs> jazz on Spotify. <laughs> the soloist downbeat started but check this just out. the tiniest bit behind the rhythm section, but their offbeats were not delayed. That sounds like this. Sounds better. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. 
And that's taking the same thing. Yeah. Like, and look, the drums are still not swinging on their own. Right. So they, you're already, they, they're having to battle that. But just that little bit of offset is crazy, that's man. Crazy. Yeah. You hear a difference between the clips? It's okay. Geisel says most people probably won't. Well, we do. Ah. We do, and our ah. listeners do, Geisel. Dr. Geisel. Well, everyone's heart <laughs> does for sure. Everyone's yeah. soul does 100% yeah. if you were listening to this. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't that Dr. Seuss's creator's name, Dr. Geisel? The, the author of Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss was the author. <laughs> the, oh, it might well, have been Dr. his real Seuss name. Was that, oh, no, that's the cat. That's the cat in the hat. hat. Okay, that's the Dr. Lo, Seuss okay. wasn't a character. His name was like Theodore Geisel. I, I think you're right about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All what, the timing delays we're talking about are minuscule. Just 30 milliseconds or a fraction of Well, anyone who's ever played around in Logic or Pro Tools knows that 30 milliseconds is not minuscule. It, it is not, you know what I'm actually, saying? Yeah. It takes to blink an eye. Even so, the jazz musicians reading the clips picked up on it. Yeah. They noticed the difference and they could feel the difference. They told us that they could hear a friction between the rhythm section and the soloist, but they were amazed that they could not identify what was going on exactly. Geisel says, yeah. Wait, is that Larry Golding's? Uh, <laughs> is that Hans Groiner? <laughs> is that Hans Groiner? It's Dr. Hans Groiner. <laughs> No, but I think he made a great point. He's just like, we were able, we, the professional jazz listeners, were able to pick up that it was more swinging. And mm. we, we, now, we were not like, wow, that is killing. Yeah. But we were like, that's better. Well, and again, I want to- We just, didn't know why, though. I just want to put like a bit of a disclaimer on here. You will not be able to swing harder if you think, okay, 30 <laughs> milliseconds pulled back or whatever. This is something that you just have to listen to a bunch of music and get it into your- like you need to get the sound of it and that feeling of it so you can recognize it. If you didn't yeah. recognize the difference, you should be able to feel that difference, at least to feel like one feels lame and one feels right. vibrant and lifelike, you know? And generally, it, it, it's going to be a quicker pathway for most to be able to feel that and to hear that than to actually play that, Yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, the same way, like if you're looking at some something that's considered, abs well, any kind of art, like an art museum, you go to see... Picasso or, you know, big time stuff or whatever, yeah. but you want to learn about a certain style, like you're going to be able to start to understand the way the colors interact, the way the shapes, the way the proportions, the proportionality of it. It's quicker and appreciate that quicker than you can learn how to paint like that, yeah. I would think. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is something that you can start to rely on yourself the same way like if you're getting into wine and you're drinking like, well, I can't smell these different things, but you can figure out what you like and what tastes good. So this is what we're talking about is what feels good, I think. I, and that we are, as professional jazz musicians, do have and are supposed to have a better kind of grasp on, more intuitive grasp on that. Yeah, man. Also, listen, I was going to say, like, listen to life, too. Life can give you, like, I was thinking, and I wonder if any of our dear listeners, who I know we have some super smart people and some super dumb people <laughs> that listen to the show. <laughs> Whoa! No, but, uh, Shots fire! You know who you are. No, but uh, uh, if there's anybody who knows, I wonder if there's ever been studies, I'm sure there has been, on the effect of language and the music the culture produces. Because as I was listening to Louis Armstrong play and even Ella play, I'm reminded of all the time I've spent in New Orleans, and I know, Peter, you've lived there for decades, but, um, you know, the language in that city yeah. swings like right. crazy. Like, right. like the, 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 there's syncopation to it. There's the same feeling to it yeah. that you get in the music, you yeah. know? And that's been my experience other places. Even if I think about a place like England, who's got one of the most, you know, the richest choral traditions right. in all the world, their vowels when they sing are incredibly round. Yeah. Like these warm, round vowels. And that's how, you know, uh, most English in England is spoken with these big round vowels, or at least, you know, uh, what is it called? Uh, presented English or whatever that is, you know what I right, mean? Right, 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 um, right. And even, you know, I've been to like... Um, South Africa and worked with some uh, some uh, choirs, some Zulu Christian choirs that do mm. like choral music, and you know they have a very specific English accent. Yes, and uh, the denunciation and, and their ing their singing in English has the same rhythmic feel. Mm. You know what I mean? It's all kind of in twelve eight, <laughs> like the That's way they right. talk and the way they right. sing. It's right, pretty right. amazing. It's got that lilt. Yeah, right, right. yeah. And I'm just wondering, and maybe someone knows, has there been a study just culturally around the world, the effect of a culture's language on its music? It has to have some. Oh, absolutely. Because it's I mean, the heartbeat. It's like I mean, how, how we communicate. Speak Portuguese in Brazil. Right. It's like sounds like the, the phrasing. Feel, yeah, the yeah. samba feel. Absolutely. Can you give me a swoosh there? 
All right, we've got some exciting stuff coming up, but I wanted to just talk to you a little okay. bit about Open Studio. I've heard of it. I've a couple times, yeah, I've heard. <laughs> but our is Open that, Studio is members that pottery. It's, it's, it's a, it's a you come on in, paint, paint the pottery, do your little thing on the weekend. No, it's just it's really a, an exciting uh, gathering place for jazz aficionados, jazz players, people that want to get pl better playing jazz, but also want to have a little bit of fun as they're doing and connect with other folks. And our new Open Studio membership has just been amazing. We have all this fantastic com content. The newest of which is your course on harmony. Yeah, hearing great just, harmony. Hearing great harmony um, and, and how you apply that to your practice and your playing and everything. We have all these wonderful resources, and uh, we want to invite folks in as yeah. our lead sponsor here at the You'll Hear Hearing Great Harmony is such a, a it was built out of the, the um, repertoire club, you know, on the Daily Guided Practice Session at Open Studio Pro. And it's really been uh, incredible to hear the feedback because I think a lot of people didn't know that there are these big motions that happen in tunes. Like if I were to play this, Peter. Yes. You know, many people don't know that if you can identify what chords that I just played were diatonic seventh chords, what chords were secondary dominants, did we do any tonal center shifts? Did we go into any new tonal neighborhoods mm. that you can save yourself all of this, you know, brain power as you're working through this stuff? And eventually it helps to start bleeding into your improvisation so that you're not thinking at all. So that you're just hearing these bigger movements as opposed to these are the seven notes that go with this chord. These are the seven notes that go with this chord. You just understand sort of the major pillars of the harmonic structure of what you're playing. And then you think less, play more. That's sort of the goal of Open Studio, right? Is yeah. to sort of get this stuff ingrained. And here, being able to hear these big harmonic movements yeah. is something that I think we've underestimated in the, uh, the the music education system. Like understanding what is going on in those big movements. It could be a game changer. So hearing great harmony is there for that. We help you identify diatonic seventh chords in, in tunes. We help you identify things like tritone substitutions, mm -hmm. secondary dominance, secondary diminished. What do you know about that? Mm -hmm. And then all of these great tonal center shifts, which help to, like instead of thinking of this as like flat seven minor, flat third dominant, flat six major, oh, that's just a two five and G flat. We're just gonna go there for a couple bars and then go back to the key of B flat. That kind of stuff, it just is immensely helpful as we're improvising so that we're not thinking all these little bits, we're thinking the bigger picture. So great. So here in Great Harmony, you get that as well as all of Adam's courses, the Jazz Piano Method, Jeff Keyser, all of our offerings when you become a member. Go to openstudiojazz.com slash YHI. Now, why do I say YHI? You'll hear it. You've got it. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> so, so back to swing. Yeah. yeah. Anybody, if if uh, anybody, anyway, <laughs> if anybody knows of any resources there on language and music, I would love to check out any books or whatever articles that anybody has. Yeah, good. absolutely. Yeah. All right, we're going to check out just a little bit more. Uh, again, we're going to link to the. Uh, there's actually some great stuff here, um, but uh, ooh, there it went. Okay, we're gonna um, we're gonna link to this entire. Uh, well, we may just listen to the entire thing here. Uh, but we're also going to link to it. Musicians were we seven go. and a half times more likely to rate the version with the downbeat delays as swinging harder. The researchers also... This is the kind of research I've been waiting for years. Someone to, to ask you to rate swing? Yeah, totally. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Isn't I love that what it. this show is all about? Exactly. Seven and a half... Per, seven seven point five times swinging her. As proved <laughs> yeah. by science. German approved. I believe that's what OGs react to IGs is all about. recordings of jazz soloists, and they found that almost... All of them were using tiny downbeat delays relative to the rhythm section. Yeah. There were very few exceptions. Geisel says these tiny timing delays aren't random. They're systematic. The musicians are probably just doing it intuitively. Important point. So have scientists finally cracked the code for swing? Well, we have cracked a lot of it. But he says <laughs> there are some mysteries of individual artistry that science might Never be able to unravel. And that's okay. That's As right. As for jazz musicians seeking the secret to swing, McBride says, study the greats. There's the spiritual answer and then there's the, you know, the scientific answer. You know, I think you just got to listen to people who did it well. Louis Armstrong, start there. You know, uh, you actually want to go hear somebody who can swing their butt off. Nicholas Payton would not be a bad start. <laughs> Bam. Bradford Marcellus would not be a bad start. He says, listen closely. Notice he mentioned two musicians famous for being from New Orleans, Louisiana. I know. Yeah. yeah and I think, he, I don't think he did that purpose. I think he was just thinking about like stuff that swing, you know, yep. stuff that you can hear now. Yep. And yeah. And eventually, 
those mysteries of rhythm and timing will reveal themselves. Maria Godoy, NPR News. So we're going to have another shout out. We, we, we talk about New Orleans a lot, but just another shout out to New Orleans for giving us swing, for giving us that feel. Yes, like, amazing. Absolutely. Amazing the OG of swing. So yeah. it's a great uh, piece by, by Maria Godoy and the whole NPR science and music team. Big shout out to Christian McBride, of course, friend of the pod, yeah. for his eloquent um, you know, analysis on that. And um, Professor Heisel. Geisel. Geisel. Geisel out of Grumman. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Hans <laughs> uh, with with that with that great scientific analysis. So yeah, I was really inspired by this. Um, please let us know in the comments. We are on the YouTubes. Did you know that? Big shout out to YouTube here. We're on the YouTubes. This is gonna be on the YouTubes, right? Oh, a little Hans Groiner. Um, but we invite you to come over there and join the dialogue. We've been having a, li- a lively dialogue. We're going to talk about that in the next uh, episode coming up, some of our wonderful commenters from our beautiful listeners. And until then, you'll hear it. Steamboat Springs, Colorado, currently. I'm in Indianapolis. Hey, how's it going, guys? Andrew, hi. Because I feel inspired to play something else from your playing. Okay, okay, that's great. (laughs) I think using the metronome is a great tool, but it's not the only tool. All of the answers are really in the music. What does it mean to live in a groove, be in a groove? Until next time, happy practicing.